this video, we're going to take a look at 20 two and a half gig Ethernet switches that are cheap, they're fanless, and there are all kinds of different port configurations and options depending on what you get. And to start it off, we're going to look at a completely new category in this Giga Plus switch. You're going to see that we have eight two and a half gig Ethernet ports, two 10 gig ports. There are no fans in this. When we open it up, you can see it is a two switch chip solution. Now the performance is generally okay. It's maybe not the best and the power consumption is slightly higher than some of these smaller switches that we've looked at. Still overall, this is a pretty good package when you consider that the price of it is only around $89.99 before discounts. We actually purchased this switch about two weeks prior to recording this video with two coupons on it that brought the price somewhere in that $60 to $65 range. And because it's so inexpensive, this switch is a unmanaged switch. There's not a lot of features here and you don't get nice things like little rubber feet or rack ears or anything like that. If you did want something that's a little bit higher end, well, we have that for you. This is a Trendnet switch with the same eight two and a half gig ports, two SFP plus 10 gig ports, but you get other little features like you get uh, little rubber feet with it. You get things like rack ears, which are always awesome. And there's a slick management interface that you can use to go and manage this switch if you want. It's actually one of the better managed management switches that we've seen in this entire roundup. The performance again is okay for a inexpensive layer two switch and the power consumption is slightly higher than the Giga Plus switch that we just looked at because there is a giant management processor under this heatsink inside the system and that's really what gives us that management interface. But of course you have to pay for that in power consumption. You also pay for that in terms of the purchase price. All of these extra features mean that this is not a 60 to $90 switch. Instead, this is usually a 200 to $230 switch, depending on the discounts available. And of course, if you wanna go see the most current information on these switches or any of the other switches we're about to look at, you can go down to the description. We will have affiliate links in the description that you can go use and just kind of check out which ones you may wanna purchase. For some of these, you're gonna see that they're very, very close. So you may just end up purchasing the cheapest one on that given day. Now, if you want something else that has a little bit more on the feature side, you can get the Microtik CRS310 that we recently did a video on. This is also an eight two and a half gig port plus two 10 gig port switch. Now this switch is super interesting because it uses a higher end Marvell switch chip, which gives it better performance. It also has more management features and the street price of this switch is usually somewhere in the 190 to about $219 range. The disadvantage with the Microtik switch is certainly that it tends to use a little bit more power because it does have a much beefier switch chip in it. Now those three switches represent a new class of eight two and a half gig and two SFP plus 10 gig port switches that are relatively inexpensive. Guys, you could not get a switch like this for under four or $500 just two or three years ago. And that is really the goal of this entire project. On the STH main site, we're keeping a guide with over 60 switches now listed and all of the different port counts and features. So if you're looking for one, definitely go check that out. You may just decide, hey, there's something that I want that's a little bit different. We may have already reviewed it and we're not even getting covered in this video. The other thing is though that the price Pricing on these switches changes all the time. You may want to go and purchase a different switch depending on what day it is, you know, what's sold out, what has a better coupon, all that kind of stuff. We will have affiliate links to everything that we have in this video down below. And also we are going to have a whole bunch of links on that ultimate guide and also go to that ultimate guide and bookmark it for future reference. But those are just three of the 20 plus switches that we're going to take a look at in this video. These two switches are the Hasvo S600W units. Now there are four ports of two and a half gig ethernet. Each of them has an SFP plus port. If you want to have things like optical networking, you can do that there. And then there is a 10 G base T port. These are the only switches that we have that have all three types of ports, the two and a half gig 10 G base T and SFP plus networking. And they're only a little bit more than getting a media converter that you can plug into an SFP plus port and turn it into a 10 G base T port. So it's kind of like getting that built in plus the fact that you get the extra four two and a half gig ports. But there is a lot more going on here. There is a management interface, which is pretty easy to use as a web management interface goes. It's not fancy, but it's there. And you can also turn that off using the little switch on the front. Now, while these are already some of the most feature packed switches that you can find, they have one other one in the S600 WP, which is a PoE version. So if you wanna have access points hooked up to your two and a half gig ethernet ports and powered over ethernet, you can totally go do that. Now we did an entire video on these switches that we'll link in the description. If you 
you just want to learn more, but I think they're super exciting. One of the big challenges, of course, is that people have been like, hey, Patrick, um, they're great, but I don't want to order off of AliExpress. Well, that's why we have this switch right here, which is a MokerLink version of the exact same switch. In this, you have the exact same four ports of two and a half gig, one SFP plus, one 10 G base T. You have a switch for managed or unmanaged. I think that the labeling is actually a little bit clearer on the MokerLink, just if we're being honest here. The web interface says MokerLink, but it's pretty much the exact same as the Hasavo. The power consumption among these three switches is pretty similar. The performance is pretty similar. And when you open up the MokerLink unit and you look inside, you see a little switchboard that also looks like it says Hasavo on it. And since we have both the non-PoE versions of the Hasavo and the MokerLink, and we ran them side by side with very similar power consumption and performance, I would say that these are almost exactly the same switch, except for the branding on it. Now, of course, these are some of the cheapest switches that you can find. Whenever we review these low cost switches, something people always say is, well, aren't we worried about security and them stealing data and all that kind of stuff? I just wanna point out that all of these switches have a process that we go through where we hook these switches up to a specific network in our new studio and lab, and we make sure that we're not seeing any kind of exfiltration of data to any you know places that shouldn't be there. We're kind of looking for that. Now, of course, this is not a super in-depth firmware look or anything like that. We also are not gonna be testing these things for like two or three years to see if there's something that's like a time delayed thing that's injected or whatever. But on the other hand, I think that we are doing at least enough to say like, hey, these switches are not stealing your data. If we ever find one that doesn't pass our test, we're gonna let folks know on the STH main site and we will not review any more switches from that vendor. And my expectation is that vendors will comply. The fact that it does take us over a week to review these switches is kind of painful, but I think it is a necessary step to make sure that folks at least have some reasonable expectation that these are okay. But we're looking at more than 20 switches today, so let's keep going. Now, over the past year or so, the four port two and a half gig ethernet plus two SFP plus switches have gone all over the place. People absolutely love them. Some of them, of course, have trouble with DAX and stuff. So just using uh, SFP plus optical modules is definitely the way I would go on this switch. But at the same time, uh, there are a ton of options and they are absolutely dirt cheap now. And there are some that even have some cool little features to them. One of the more vanilla ones though, is this MokerLink unit. You can see that we have our four two and a half gig ethernet ports. We also have our two SFP plus ports. This is a pretty small switch and it is pretty simple inside. Now, using this as our performance baseline, it performs pretty much how we would expect one of these switches. We've done a number of reviews before, and this seems just about normal. This class of switch also tends to be one of, if not the lowest power set of switches that we reviewed. So you'll see that here as well. And of course, the best part of it is that it only costs about $49. From there, let's move up the stack slightly to this, which you're not gonna believe me, but this is actually called an iEnron switch, although they call it Enron or something like that. But if you read it, it's actually iEnron, which um, is probably one of the funniest names that you could imagine for a switch. And you'll see that this has a more colorful front. It also has our four two and a half gig ethernet ports, our two 10 gig ports, but there is another feature here, which is this little VLAN switch. This little VLAN switch does port isolation so that the two and a half gig ports cannot talk to each other and so they can only talk to the uplink ports. That's useful in some environments, but for others, they're just gonna leave that feature off. Although this is nice to just have it. Now the performance is about the same as that Moker Link unit. And we see that the power consumption is also very similar. You might ask, does that you know port isolation VLAN switch, does that cause more power consumption? And we really haven't seen much, if any impact by using that little toggle. And this one we purchased at that same $49 price point as the Moker Link switch. So I would say just get whichever one is cheaper unless you really need that little port isolation VLAN switch. But if you want something that's a little bit different, iEnron has another version of the switch that is almost identical. You get the same four two and a half gig ethernet ports, the same two SFP plus ports, and you also get PoE functionality via an external power adapter. Now this is only like a 72 watt adapter. So you're definitely not gonna have like 
as much power as you want. PoE++ ports these days can go up and you can easily get a 90 watt port, but you're not gonna get 90 watts of power output on a switch that is designed and only has 72 watts for the entire switch, right? I mean, that's just not gonna happen. Still, if you just need to go power, maybe a camera, maybe an access point, and then that's about it, or maybe a couple cameras or something like that. This has plenty in it and it is relatively inexpensive. This switch is only $63 when we purchased it, which makes it just slightly more expensive than the non-PoE version. Performance-wise, it performed identically and power consumption at idle was a little bit higher just because we have all the PoE functionality. So of course, it depends a little bit on the discounts, but if it's only maybe $14 to $15 more for the PoE version, I think a lot of folks might look at the iEnron PoE version versus the non-PoE version. Now, of course, if you want something a little bit less expensive, usually this switch, which is the Nick Giga switch, tends to be a little bit less expensive. It still has the four two and a half gig ethernet ports. It has the two SFP plus ports. It also like the Ionron has the VLAN switch or the port isolation switch. Inside, you're gonna see something that looks fairly similar. It's based on the exact same Realtek switch chip. And so performance wise, you get about the same. And it's not just the performance, you also get about the same power consumption as the Ionron one. And so overall, this switch would be similar except for the fact that you can often purchase it for about $5 less than the iEnron one with the various discounts that you can get out there. But Nick Giga certainly doesn't want to be outdone by the iEnron folks. I can't believe I'm saying this, but this is the power over ethernet four port two and a half gig plus two SFP plus Nick Giga switch. You will notice that it is much larger than the Nick Giga switch. And the reason for that is that there is an internal power supply. The internal power supply has slightly more power overhead at about 78 watts versus 72 for the iEnron. And it's also internal, which I know a lot of folks like, but there are other folks that prefer the external DC power bricks. The performance of course is about the same that we've seen from the other switches in this class. And the power consumption is more similar to the iEnron PoE version than it is the non-PoE versions of these switches. What's more, we actually purchased this switch for only $55 after discounts, which makes it only maybe a six to $10 upgrade over a non-PoE version, and I think that's pretty attractive. Now, if you are a little apprehensive about putting a Nick Giga switch in, there is also a Yuan Lei version of the switch, which has four two and a half gig ethernet ports plus two SFP plus ports, just like the other models that we've looked at. Inside, you're gonna see that we have our same Realtek chip set, plus we have a internal power supply. These switches are pretty darn similar, and so we see similar performance as well as similar power consumption. Of course, like the other ones, this is still only a 802.3 AF and AT solution. So you see that you get about 25 watts or whatever as a max power budget per port. But of course, at 78 watts, you still have to have maybe, you know, 10 or so watts for the switch itself. And so you get about 60 something watts as your overall PoE power budget. But of course, it's still good if you just need to power an AP, a camera and that kind of stuff. Plus, you just want to have a nice little network. This is a decent little box. And last but not least, we have this little Zyke store unit. Now, if you've heard of Zyke store before, it might not necessarily be for switches. One of the things that these guys do is they actually make like Synology compatible upgrades because Synology makes these these kind of like little custom nicks and stuff like that that cost a lot from Synology, but they aren't really using very expensive parts. So these guys actually make modules that you can use in your Synology that use the same parts that are like way, way cheaper. And I just kind of think that's a funny little part of their business. But Zyke Store also makes switches and we have this switch right here. Now this is of course part of our four two and a half gig plus two SFP plus port switch roundup. And one of the cool things that this switch has that a lot of others didn't have is it has rubber feet. As a pet peeve, I wish that all of these came with little rubber feet. You could of course order your own, but it's just easier when they come with them. Now this switch had very similar performance to the other switches and it had similar power consumption as you would of course expect by now as the non-PoE switches in this class. It does however have one feature that is completely different. It has a management interface. So you can log into the web interface. And when you're in there using admin admin, you can go on and just kind of set VLAN, set some minor things like quality of service and all kinds of stuff. There are some things that you can do in here. You're of course not gonna get the same level as like a micro tick switch or a you know higher end switch like that, but you do get some features. Now, another kind of switch that we've seen recently is this five port, two and a half gig ethernet plus one 10 gigabit ethernet SFP plus port. This is the Ulink 
Mika version of that, and it is the same pretty much inside and out as many of the just kind of regular low cost options that we've seen. Now, the big thing on this is of course going to be the price, which we see is generally around that $50 range after discount, sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less, but this is a pretty standard offering in that class. Another example of a switch like that is this Nick Giga switch, which is the same five two and a half gig port plus one SFP plus port switch. I actually think that this one looks a little bit better because they have this kind of like bluey purple on the front, which looks kind of cool. Inside though, they are very similar. And that leads us to have very similar performance as well as power consumption between the two units. My recommendation is to just get whichever one is cheaper between the two. Now let's say that you want something a little bit different. Maybe you want PoE. Well, this has two things that are different with it. This is the Sedola five port, two and a half gig ethernet plus one SFP plus port switch. But the big difference is that the first four ports are PoE ports. Something that might be a little bit different is that the fifth two and a half gig ethernet port is not PoE, so you only get PoE on four ports. Now, the other thing that's different on the Sedola switch is the fact that it has an internal power supply. Most of the switches that we're looking at today use external little 12 volt power bricks, but this one has a power supply that is built in. The performance of this is about the same as the non-PoE versions. It's really just the fact that this adds PoE as another feature. Now, since it is a PoE switch and we do have a bigger power supply, we do see higher costs, but this is not like other switch segments where a simple switch going PoE can cost $100, $200 more. Instead, this is more of maybe an $86 switch for about a $35 to $40 premium over the other ones that we've looked at. You also end up with higher power consumption because you do have the PoE components in there. You have a larger power supply and overall you're going to see just slightly higher idle power and just you know normal power consumption on the switch which is very similar to other poe switches that we've seen overall the internal power supply on this is about 65 watts and i think you probably get about 55 watts or so for poe devices on the four poe ports now some people want management and if you do want management on a switch this is another Nick Giga switch in this class where you have five two and a half gig ethernet ports plus one SFP plus 10 gig port. It uses a pretty similar power adapter. It looks overall pretty similar. The big difference is that you can hook this up and log into a management interface. There you can do things like set VLANs and all that stuff. I will just say though, that I am not a huge fan of the Nick Giga interface. I just think that they do some tweaks in there that make it a little bit slower and I'm just not a huge fan of it. I think some of the other ones that we've seen tend to perform a little bit better. Still adding management, depending on the deal and day, only tends to add about 10 to $20 to the total cost of the switch, which is not much if you just need to go in and set up VLANs for some reason, you can do that on the switch for not that much more, but overall the performance is very similar to the other switches that we've seen. And by having a managed switch versus the unmanaged switch, you don't tend to see that much higher power consumption on this either. So if you do think you are gonna need some of the management features, it might be worth spending an extra few bucks to get the managed version. Now with all of these switches, you're gonna hear me say pricing, but pricing may have changed from when we purchased them. Sometimes there is the pricing, sometimes you get a little discount on that, sometimes there's a discount and a coupon, and sometimes there are actually two coupons if you look really hard on a page, and you can get switches for a lot less expensive than sometimes they're listed. Now, of course, if you're looking at this two or three months later and you're like, hey, it's more expensive, can't find them in stock, anything like that, well, you need to go and subscribe, turn on those notifications so you can see these videos when they first come out. Otherwise, uh, you know, other people are gonna get these deals well before you. We post this on both the STH main site, which is much larger than our YouTube channel, as well as the YouTube channel. So there are a ton of folks that are looking at all of these switches. Now, of course, if you wanna find alternatives, go back to that ultimate switch guide because you'll be able to go and look through what are similar switches that we've reviewed and maybe look for alternatives. But we gotta get back to looking at switches, so let's go. Now, one of the segments that has completely revolutionized the cheap two and a half gig ethernet switch space has definitely been these eight port two and a half gig switches with one port of SFP plus. Now this is one of the short depth key link versions of that configuration. It has pretty much the same features that we've seen in other ones. It has the dual Realtek chip solution inside. The performance is about the same as the other switches we've seen, and you see power consumption certainly in line with what we would expect. We paid about $69 for this unit, but the price of course does change quite a bit based on the discounts, and certainly this is a category that if you just 
want a vanilla Switch, go click around and see who has special coupons and stuff. There are sometimes up to two of them on these. And, uh, you know, I, I think that's definitely something to look at because uh, you can get these pretty inexpensively these days. Now, while Keeplink may have some of the best branding of any Switch out there, the real HD ones might have some of the worst. If you look at the front of the Switch, you'll see these same eight two and a half gig Ethernet ports plus one SFP plus port that you've seen on a number of Switches at this point. You also see the SW812G, which is the only indication of what model this is. There is no branding on the front. There's no branding on the label. There's also no branding on this entire box to say that it's real HD. It just kind of feels like it's an Amazon brand. It is the slightly deeper design than the Keeplink one. And because this is based on that dual Realtek chip solution, you see similar performance and similar power consumption to the the other switches that are these eight plus one switches in our roundup. But without that extra branding, we were able to purchase this switch for only about $59 delivered next day. And so this might be a better option just because it is much less expensive for essentially the same thing other than it's a little bit bigger. Now, of course, sometimes you just want more features. And that is why we have this Yuan Lei switch, which has eight two and a half gig Ethernet ports, one SFP plus port, just like the one that we just saw but there's a difference and you might have figured that out based on the much larger chassis. Inside, you'll see the dual Realtek chip solution. So we get performance about the same as we would expect, but we also get an internal power supply at 120 watts. The switch itself should use about 10 to 12 watts max. So that gives you a 100 plus watt power budget for all of the PoE ports. Now, clearly they were using a chassis designed for another class of switch because they have a fan here that is just not used for some reason in this switch, maybe just to keep costs down, but it also keeps noise to a minimum. The overall power consumption, however, is a little bit higher than the other switches that we've seen just because it is a PoE switch and PoE components tend to add just a little bit more power to a switch even at idle. The cost is also a little bit higher at about $99, but of course you are getting a lot of PoE budget and PoE functionality for that extra, say, $30 to $40. Now, I mentioned earlier that a lot of times these are very similar switches, often with maybe some nameplate changes or something like that. And this is a good example of that. This is the Davuaz 8 two and a half gig port switch with another SFP plus port on it. So it's another one of these like dual Realtek chip solutions if you look inside. But if you also look inside, something you will see is that there's an internal power supply because this is also a PoE version with an internal power supply. If the chassis overall looks pretty similar, you not only get the rack ears like we did on the Yuan Lei, but you also get the same fan port that's not occupied. So there's a cutout, but there's no fan again. On the power consumption side, again, we see about the same as the other, the Yuan Lei PoE switch. We also get the 120 watt power budget overall. And so it's very, very similar in terms of a switch. The difference is that we purchased this for only $89 or about $10 less than the Yuan Lei. Now, of course, these prices change all the time. One may be more or less depending on which day it is. But both of these switches had rack ears. They both had internal power supplies and that PoE function, which makes them a little bit different than just a vanilla eight plus one switch that we've seen a bajillion times at this point. Now with all these videos, I like to have key lessons learned. Like what did we learn from this video? Well, number one, I think that the eight port, two and a half gig, two port SFP plus switches are super interesting. And I also think that the ones that have the 10G base T as well as the SFP plus, those are the most interesting switches that I've seen by far. On the other hand, some of the other switches that we've looked at are very inexpensive and that makes them kind of awesome. To me, if there's any key lesson learned, it's just the fact that these switches are so much less expensive than they were just two or three years ago. It used to be pretty hard to get a two and a half gig switch, even if it was just like a five port, two and a half, eight port, two and a half gig switch for like under $200. And now there are tons of options and a lot that also include 10 gigabit ethernet. Now, of course, if you're running a bank or something like that, I wouldn't necessarily recommend these switches, but if you just need something to go and get cheap and easy two and a half gig, maybe some SFP plus connectivity, then I think there are a ton of great options on the market. And of course, if there's nothing else that you take away from this video, definitely go check out the ultimate switch guide that we have over 60 switches listed. We're going to keep updating that with more switches. So if you just want something that's a little bit different, well, definitely go check it out there. Also go to the forums and, you know, you can suggest switches for us to go look at. We're happy to go look at them in the future. We're going to keep making that the best resource 
for two and a half gig switches on the internet. And as always, if you like this, well, why don't you give it a like, click subscribe, and turn on those notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching and have an awesome day.